I might talk a lot about dinosaurs, funny enough, but I probably wouldn't have made this channel and would probably be working in finance or something if it wasn't for the discovery of the very first terrible lizard. Now, Megalosaurus is the oldest dinosaur in terms of how long it's been known for. The paleontology itself has been around for a lot longer, but it was kind of an underground hipster science before this. It wasn't actually until the world first found out about these lizards that were the size of elephants that the general public first took notice and the science actually became popular. So how did this happen? Well, the earliest specimens found of this creature in the later 17th century was a possible tooth and the lower part of a femur that was originally attributed to a war elephant. Now, the femur itself had a quite memorable appearance and was illustrated and nicknamed as... Come, Come on, Ryan. Keep, keep it, it together. together. You're a professional, for Christ's sakes. Scrotum humanum. It's not funny. In fact, this should technically be its true scientific name since it was the first publication to assign the specimen with a genus and species. So the first dinosaur that should have been named shouldn't be Megalosaurus, it should be Scrotum. But to be fair, because so little was understood about the science at the time, rules also state that if a name hasn't been used in publications after 1899, that name can be replaced. So they opted for a name that meant it could be taken a little more seriously. The first official finding of this dinosaur was a partial lower jaw found in the 1790s in the Stonesfields Quarry of Oxfordshire, England. Famous paleontologists Williams, Buckland and Conybear would then officially name the animal Megalosaurus bucklandi. This animal would also be one of the three that Richard Owen used when he first crowned the group with their iconic name, Dinosaurs. Now when it was first reconstructed, nothing like this was known and they didn't really have a lot of material to go on, other than the fact that the jaw looked kind of reptilian. So the first reconstructions looked very different to what we know today. These life-size reconstructions are actually still erected to this day as a testament to how far the science has come and can be found at Crystal Palace Park, which at its height was the Victorian equivalent of Disney World. Now obviously we're at the point where we have a lot more findings, so let's take a look at what this dinosaur was actually like. Megalosaurus was a theropod, the mostly carnivorous two-legged dinosaurs. It grew up to 8 metres or 26 feet long and weighed up to 950 kilograms or just over 2,000 pounds. Now for a theropod of this size it was slightly more lightly built than other close relatives but still a very robust animal with three clawed strong forelimbs that were a respectable length for a theropod. Despite the lower jaw being known we are yet to uncover a full skull. So all reconstructions as of the date of this video are hypothetical based on phylogenetic bracketing of closest known relatives. Because not a lot was known about this theropod and the fact that what little material we did have seemed superficially generic for a large theropod, this genus ended up becoming a wastebasket taxon. In other words, any theropod that scientists weren't too sure on ended up being named Megalosaurus until the genus was restricted to material only found from the Middle Jurassic of England. Then scientists went back and forth over the nomenclature of this dinosaur with the generic material being confused enough to call into question whether this should be even a valid genus. In 2008 though, it was settled that the lower jaw had enough unique traits to be the classifying feature of the Megalosaurus genus. Speaking of which, Megalosaurus's phylogeny looks something like this. The Megalosaurines, which include the Allosaurus rival Torvosaurus and Duryavenator, is within the family Megalosaurids which is in the superfamily Megalosauria, which includes Spinosaurids, and that is within the Megalosauroids. That's a lot of megalizards. In terms of its environment, Megalosaurus was found in the middle Jurassic units of Oxfordshire from around 167 million years ago. This area at the time was coastal, with a seasonally dry subtropical climate that was full of mangrove-like swamps. 
Now at the time, this area of Europe was actually a series of islands, thanks to the sea level rise leaving only the highest points, or massifs, as islands. Making up the greenery here were the Dipteratochids, Dixonia kids, Peltospermales, Benetartales, Ginkgoels and Cycads. Limited invertebrate fauna include beetles, giant cicadas and dragonflies, but vertebrates are much more well known. Cartilaginous, coleocanth and lungfish are well known as well as small mammals such as Stereognathus and Fasciolotherium. There was also Clobiodon, another unclassified Ramphorhynchid, the crocodilian Teleosaurus, Protocheles, and the only known dinosaurs were Cardiodon, Cetiosaurus, Cruxochiros, an indeterminate ornithopod, Megalosaurus, and Iliosuchus. But even the latter might just be a small or juvenile Megalosaurus. Despite the relative lack of dinosaur fossils, it has been concluded that, due to its size and distribution throughout the area, Megalosaurus was the apex predator of this area. As to what it hunted, it was either hunting smaller dinosaurs that we are yet to find conclusive specimens of, such as the aforementioned ornithopod, or it was hunting sauropods. But these sauropods are pretty modest for long-necked dinosaurs, so it's possible that Megalosaurus could take them down if they were working as a group, but that's if they were hunting the sauropods. We just don't know. So despite the fact that this dinosaur was discovered well over 200 years ago, we don't actually know a huge amount about it or even the faunal dynamics of the whole ecosystem. All we can hope for is that more findings shed light on this either directly or indirectly. But until it does, I'll catch you guys next time.